it's another day for fans to watch their national teams in action in the international friendly. Lined up for today are African and other international friendly matches. For us, our focus will be the Nigeria-Tunisia match later tonight. Welcome to today's edition of Sports Reel, reaching you from the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Tamara Ibiwe. Countries on the African continent are set to take on their opponents. Samurai Blue of Japan lock on with the elephants of Côte d'Ivoire. And the Atlas Lions of Morocco go toe to toe against the Ara Congo. The Super Eagles of Nigeria will slug it out with the Carthage Eagles of Tunisia. And the three color of Mexico square up against the desert foxes of Algeria. Putting the Carthage Eagles of Tunisia and the Super Eagles of Nigeria head to head, their first meeting was at the National Stadium in Surulere, Lagos in 1961 at the Africa Cup of Nations second round qualifiers. Nigeria defeated Tunisia 2-1. Since then, both sides have met 19 times, with Nigeria recording six wins, seven draws, and six losses. Their last meeting was at the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations third place match in Egypt. Odion Higala's third minute strike was all that mattered. international friendly but before that some Nigerians are talking about the expectations in tonight's international friendly take a listen right now if you look at the Tunisia match Tunisia match they met Nigeria 19 times in a competitive match and they win they have won six matches and uh, each time then they play seven draw against them so now this competitive match, Nigeria is trying to improve their squad because as at now, two international Nigerians, they are not be pitcher in the Tunisian match. Like we have one of the uh, uh, expensive African player that is uh, Victor Simbe of Napoli. And the other one from the Leicester City that is Ndidi. Well play indeed. So these two, they are not part of the Nigerian squad. Nigeria, they are preferring a uh, usable team in order to have another replacement for their old team. So this will not be come to Nigeria as a surprise or when they lose the match, they take it as a something is a problem. No. Just the Nigeria, they are improving their team in order to have a good team before they are match in November against Sri Lanka. You see, with the work of uh, the coach, they will still blend because they, they are very serious to play with us. And we, we hope they, they blend very well because they are, they are not yet getting themselves together. I expect the better performance. Um, Gennotron might have learned his lesson by then because he knows that anything short of victory, I think the NFF might just uh, be looking at how to replace him uh, ahead of 2021 uh, Nations Cup. From the list we have seen he has bring in, is more of attackers and more of defense. But I'm sure he's trying to see what he can do to see where this one can fit in, so that he will have a formidable team against other teams coming up of the Nation Cup qualifier. There's a guest with me to talk more about um, the Nigeria-Algeria friendly, as well as the upcoming Nigeria-Tunisia international friendly. 
He is a, a coach that is known far and wide. He has coached defunct uh, Sharks FC of Port Harcourt. He has also coached Aqua United and Enugu Rangers. On the big stage, he is a former head coach of Nigeria's under-20 side and also under-17. He led the under-17 side to the 2009 FIFA World Cup. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good, I'm very good. <laughs> Talking about the performance, what do you make of it? Uh, well, you see, I want to look at it from uh, uh, three angles. The first angle is the coaching angle, you know, the coach himself. Then the second angle is uh, uh, result uh, expectations. And then uh, the third angle is uh, uh, how many of the players that we are uh, in the team as new players. Uh, if, you, if you ask the coach, he, will, he said earlier before the match that he wasn't going to focus on the result. He was going to look at the team and see how the new players can blend into uh, with the old players. Uh, that is to say himself wasn't actually interested in what the result is going to look like. Uh, but ordinary Nigerians, we are looking at what the result is going to look like. And that is why he's a different person towards what we are looking at. So if I want to take it from the coaching angle, what the uh, coach is actually looking at is what is more important than what we expected as, uh, as the end result of the game. So I think the new players uh, uh, wasn't what we had expected. Either because um, uh, uh, they are coming into, the, into that kind of stage for the first time or because they were not good enough. We have to take the second game and, uh, and watch to see whether there could be a change. Because I would want a situation where you have to allow a reputation for you to actually see whether they are good enough or whether they are not good enough. Before we get to the second game, Nigeria-Algeria, you have talked about the new players. What about the old players? Did they satisfy you? Uh, you know, when you have a mixture of this kind of situations, the flowing of the game might not be the same. For instance, if the whole of them were the ones that were playing together before, then you can talk about this you are talking about now. But once you have one or two, three, four new players in a team, the flowing of the game might not be in sequence the way you expected it. So I think I will have to excuse a little bit of the performance of the old players, though that wasn't what is expected. But I think it was because of uh, the new ones that are playing along with them. Talking about um, the new players as well, uh, you've already said maybe it's because it's their first time in the Super Eagles. But what did you think was missing in that match that day? The missing link? They were, they were actually playing as if uh, there is a, 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 a sort of a, a, a competition of trophy. There was no relaxation in their game. I was expecting them to just be calm and let the ball flow and let's see how they can possess the game and see how they can recover the ball when they lose it. But they were losing their positions often. Even the passes wasn't as it has been expected. So I, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of uh, 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 things that they really have to consider proper that we expected them to do. I was counting the way we pass our ball. Most of the times we do a lot of wrong passes. And I was looking at the way we receive our ball. Most of the times we receive to lose the ball. I was also looking at the way we get back the ball during transition. It was taking us too long. Immediately we win the ball, we wouldn't hold it for too long, and they will come and win the ball from us again. And it will be too long before we we'll get the ball back from them. So those are the little things we just have to look at. One player that um, has been the most talked about in that match is um, Maduka Okoye, the goalkeeper. What's your impression about him? Uh, well, uh, that match wasn't enough for me to actually want to say he did well or he didn't do well. Because the pressure that was actually coming to him uh, was uh, a half-baked pressure. 
uh, for a start, that's a good one. I'm expecting him to, to do better probably when, when the pressure will be high. But I give him a pass, Mark, anyway. All right, um, we've talked about Nigeria, Algeria. Let's hear what um, all the football loving Nigerians have to say about it. The bottom line is that it's uh, a friendly game, and what you really want to see from friendly game is performance of uh, players. So uh, I think Gennaro must have uh, looked at a couple of players that he has in mind going forward. And if you can see, our attack is not working at all. The light of uh, what they are called our number nine, the uh, on action, is not playing anything, and the coach is there looking at him. We have we have young young boys who can play more than him. If you can see the game in the second half, immediately Kelechi came into the game. You see our attacking that is, our attacking then is working. The light of uh, Musa Ahmed Musa, you can see we have talented players who can play more than. Uh, well, uh, it's not too bad, you know, presently Algerians uh, Desert Foxes are the current champions of Africa, uh, having won the last uh, African Cup of Nations, so you cannot um, take anything away from the team. Of course they are very good and I can see presently they are better than Nigeria. And in the match that I watched, uh, I, I saw the team as in Nigeria Super Eagles team as a team in the making because of the uh, introduction of about four new players into the foray of the team. So that actually established uh, the midfield which I saw. An indication that the coach needs to work on the defence and needs to work on defending set pieces. These games are not uh, uh, competition proper. They're not tournament games. They're just the games, they're just games to test the waters. So Nigeria didn't do too bad. Yeah, the performance of Rory can say was poor. A couple of players have actually come under the sticks. Players like Alex Wubi, who much was expected from. And this is an opportunity to actually show if he's capable of handling that position. So I think it's a great, it was a great game. Now to the Tunisia game. That match will get underway later today. And Coach John Obu is still here with us. You analyzed the Algeria match, your expectations against Tunisia. Uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to put myself under an expectation of victory or an expectation of loss. But I'm putting myself in between to see a good game that is better than uh, the first one that we watched. Just like what I said before, I will want a situation where I want to see those players play again. Because you can't just give them one game and then decide to change a team to another one again. I don't think that will be proper. I wish that uh, Gonorau will understand and allow them to play again. So I will be able to give them the best assessment that we are thinking about them. I think that's, that's my expectations in that game. All right, um, our fingers are crossed as our eyes will be glued to our television sets to see the match between Nigeria and Tunisia. John Obu, thanks for coming on the show. God bless you. Thank you very I much. I hope to see you some other time. Thank you. It's never a waste of time to combine sports and education. This story is about a 19-year-old professional footballer, a graduate of anatomy from Afe Babalola University in Adoekiti. He has joined FCV International Football Academy in Stanford, UK. His role model, he says, is Kanu Wanko and hopes to play for the Super Eagles in future. The main one is discipline to know why I went there, to keep my, my head focused on the reason I went there, to play football. Yes, we meet a lot of people there from all over the world with different backgrounds, but it means it's just to be disciplined, obey my coaches, obey instructions, and be a good boy. Education is it's a plus to everyone. If you can get education, I'm sure you have a lot of options in future in life. Now, with education, I see it as a plus for me. Especially with the course I studied anatomy, it will help me know how to take care of my body better and the people around me. To see me in the best league in the world, in the Premier League, I'm playing for my national country, Nigeria. The asset is his ability to score goals and ability to use his body. He's a player like uh, Yakubu Ayegbeni, a player like um, 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 Lukaku, and all the big men you see up front in the top flight um, leagues. I mean, FCV, they don't just um, want children to play football. They, they inculcate a culture and they bring in um, top flight coaches to train them. We've been there for him all through, bring him training state, watch him play, and he's happy about that we are too we are happy that is my advice to parents to support 
their kids in what they want to do. It is one thing to have a dream. It is another thing to work towards that dream to make it a reality. Time for us to go on a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking drafts, boxing, and tennis. Do stay tuned. We're never alone. And that is our strength. Because when we're doubted, we'll play as one. When we're held back, we'll go farther and harder. If we're not taken seriously, we'll prove that wrong. And if we don't fit the sport, we'll change the sport. We know things won't always go our way. And the world's sporting events are postponed or canceled. But whatever it is, we'll find a way. And when things aren't fair, we'll come together for change. We have a responsibility to make this world a better place. And no matter how bad it gets, we will always come back stronger. Because nothing can stop what we can do together. There are lots of board games, the most talked about across the world, and Nigeria is Scrabble. But today, we are shifting our attention to another board game, often wrongly described as a game for the old. It is called Draft. Tunde Olofi, in his early 40s from Lube Club, is still celebrating his victory after winning the maiden draft competition in a game of best of three with one win and two draws. If you want to win me, you eat be very hard. So that that one motivated me and it gave me that confidence that I should be able to win uh, 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 everybody. But we want to test the might of the players within FCT before we begin to go at national. We want to start within the FCT. And from what I've been seeing so far, I've seen that we have a lot of good players within the FCT and not only in Area 2 here. Draft is a game, is a mind game that enhances mind development. Crossing over to the boxing ring. Boxing fans in Nigeria received the news of a World Boxing Federation International Super Featherweight fight between Nigeria's real one, Oyekola, also known as Scorpion, and Spain's Josie Ramos Savin, to be held in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, on December 27, 2020, with delight. President of the Nigeria Boxing Board of Control, Rafiu Ladipo, has urged the Oyo state and federal government to support the fight fully, as Scorpion is set to bring glory to Oyo state and Nigeria. The Nigerian Boxing Board of Control is prepared. We have approved the fight. Ours is to sanction the fight, has to prove, provide the technicalities, and we are ready. And we want to support our own Ridwan to become a champion. We are also encouraging his manager and the coaches to be able to give him all the necessary assistance by way of training. Because boxing is not for you to just sleep and believe you can become a champion anytime. Though the 2020 French Open at Roland Garros has finally come to an end, it is still being talked about. Rafael Nadal winning his 13th French Open title. That's why he's called the King of Clay. He said this in 2014, and I quote, I think our generation is now on the way out. A generation is walking away and others will replace us. It's almost seven years and Rafael Nadal is still dominating. A week ago, French Open Women's Singles Champion was unsure if she would commit to tennis or go to the university. How does it feel to be the lowest ranked woman to ever win the French Open? This is the story of Iga Svontek, the Polish teenager. 
I have a guest. I will throw more light on what happened at Roland Gallows. He is a tennis player, the vice president of City Sports Club in Abuja, and also a doubles winner in the Abuja City Sports Club. Join me as I welcome Sylvester Uzoma. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much. It Always a pleasure been, to be here. It would have been odd if you hadn't won anything in tennis. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you very much. It's just Thank 2018. You. It's still fresh. Yeah, we still have, I still have um, enough time in me. I still believe I'll be able to capture a few trophies before I call it quits in the game of um, tennis. All right, let's get to business. Yeah. What do you make of Rafael Nadal, the king of, of clay? clay? Nadal, Nadal, he's, um, he's phenomenal. I, I, I wasn't completely surprised. I didn't expect the finals to be so straightforward. Um, six love, six two, seven five, I think. Fantastic result. And he's, he maintained the consistency all throughout the, the tournament. He, all his games ended in three straight sets. In fact, only two um, sets out of the entire tournament took him to tie break. Uh, McGinn's and um, Schutzman, I think, and uh, one other. But everything was three straight, three straight. So that helped him to conserve energy. And even before the tournament, I think he had skipped a number of um, tournaments. So um, there was a lot of um, reserve in him to be able to pull this through. I wasn't expecting it to be this brutal. So I'm really, really brutal impressed. Brutal easy? Uh, no, I mean, for people on the receiving end, it, was, right. it was brutal. Straight sets, straight sets, straight sets. For an entire um, Grand Slam, it's not an easy feat to, to pull out. Let's take a look at the records. Uh, Roger Federer, 20 Grand Slam titles. Mm. Rafael Nadal just equaled um, Roger Federer's records. And Novak Djokovic down in third position with just 17. Yeah. Rafael Nadal in 2014 said that his generation is leaving for the younger generation to take over. It's been about six and a half years and these three are still there. Where are the younger ones he was talking about? The younger ones are there, but they're just not yet good enough to dethrone those three. You see, I, I want to refer to the trio of um, Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal as superhumans of the game of tennis. They've taken the game of tennis to heights never um, reached previously. And um, we may have to just be patient with them till they feel like they want to step off the big stage. But even at that, I still think um, the young ones are doing a good job. Dominic Thiem, for example, has been really pushing. Sissi Pass, same thing. Um, we have um, the Schwarzmans, um, you know, there are a couple of them that are doing, um, pushing the, the, um, the, the boundaries gradually. It will take a while for them to be able to combine the physical um, gruesome um, requirement of the game with the mental balance because the game of tennis is not all about your skill and your physical ability. It's also about composure, how you're able to keep all your nerves in place to be able to stay consistent for an entire tournament. This um, trio have done it so well and uh, we are hoping sooner than later the young kids will start. Um, Dominic Thiem has already picked a, a Grand Slam so I'm hoping one more, maybe before, uh, um, let's give 2021 as the year where we'll start seeing a mix of the old ones and the new ones picking the Grand Slams and the ATP 1000 events. While we wait for the younger ones to take over in the men's singles, crossing over to the women's singles, it was the time for the younger ones. Igwa Schwantek, she didn't see this coming. Well, the women's singles just produce the upsets of um, uh, a Grand Slam. Nobody, I, I'm very sure the coaching crew of um, Swantec was not expecting that she would be in the finals. Her best ever performance before now has been the first round exit in, um, I think, the 2019 um, Australian Open. And then um, she probably did some semi-finals and quarter-final features and I think won finals in the juniors. Yeah, the juniors. So she, she hasn't really done anything in the seniors to be able to make her or um, give her contention. 
in, in the wildest dream of even the player herself, I'm sure she's still uh, pinching herself to know if this is really come true. In your words, things happen. When will things begin to happen at the City Sports Club Abuja post COVID 19? Yeah, yeah, we're already dusting our mats and um, getting things ready to. The good thing is, tennis is um, uh, more of a non contact sport, so we're already in preparation for our end of year tournament and um, we're also kicking off um, our monthly tournaments as well. So that way we can have um, people who have stored up so much um, in their bodies over the years of, I mean, over the months of staying indoors, come and do some sweat and uh, start um, increasing their um, physical stamina once again. So um, the sport of tennis is a sport of wellness and um, your ability to try and um, get involved once, twice or three times every week, definitely see, we'll see you through a successful week. So yes, we're dusting our mats, we're getting back to our tournaments again and um, hopefully opening our doors to a barrage of new members that are still um, being processed due to the COVID break. Well, you've heard from Sylvester Uzoma, he's the vice president of the City Sports Club Abuja. Is dusting his mats. What will you be dusting? Your tennis racket, I guess. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to end Sports Review today. Don't forget to join us on Thursday for another interesting edition. I am Tamara Idiwe. On behalf of the production crew, do have a wonderful day. <laughs>